Do you find yourself nauseated or even a little shaky at the thought of giving a speech or a presentation? Maybe the thought of standing before a live audience makes you weak in the knees with the fear that you'll absolutely humiliate yourself and this causes your heart to skip beats and get faster and your palms to sweat? If so, you're not alone. Public speaking is one of the most common fears today, yet public speaking is a superpower that helps us to connect with others and to communicate in a professional way. So that's what we're here to talk about in this week's Mindful Monday. If it's your first time joining, feel free to type in the comments uh, where you're coming from, if you have any questions or comments or, and or topics you'd like to hear more about in the future. Also, if it is your first time and you type the word mindful after the broadcast, I'll come back and put in a link, which if you follow, you get two free gifts. One is a hypnotic recording I created on releasing limiting beliefs. And the second one is our weekly PDF cheat sheet, which is bullet points of whatever we cover each Monday. All right, great. So talking about practical ways to get over that fear of public speaking and also to improve our public speaking. So the five ways that I like to utilize the best to, to calm and to build confidence before is to practice that calming breathing that I talk about in so many Mindful Mondays. And so you want to be doing this all the time. You want to be constantly downregulating yourself because we're always in this constant state of fight or flight. We do it to ourselves though. So I set a timer every two to three waking hours and I simply, when it buzzes because it's a silent alarm kind of thing, I simply take three deep breaths, inhale in, on the exhale in my mind, I'm thinking relax now. So it's a reminder, it's a constant reminder. So that is very useful in, in constantly down-regulating. Um, another thing that is kind of cool to do is practicing mindfulness or open focus. So there's so many different ways that you can do this, but a really quick one I like is that really fast Betty Erickson open focus. And that's where I simply look around if I wanna open my focus. Cause remember when we get into fight or flight, we have that tunnel vision and we wanna kind of be focusing more on the outside world when we're or focusing on our audience, if you will. So I'll simply say, I am aware I see three things. I'll name like the couch, the blanket, the pillow. I'm aware I hear, and then I would name, you know, I'm aware I hear um, a plane outside. I'm aware I hear the neighbor mowing his lawn. I'm aware I hear traffic in the distance. And then three things I physically feel, but it's not like anxiety or nervous. So I'm aware I physically feel my feet on the ground. I'm aware I physically feel my butt in this couch. I'm aware I physically feel uh, my notes in my hand kind of thing. And so that opens up our focus and it can help to calm us down too. And of course you can do this anytime, but it is nice to be opening your focus right before doing a public speech kind of thing. Um, you do want to be practicing what we call in hypnosis and NLP mental rehearsal or visualization. And this is kind of, uh, I love doing it the night before um, because your subconscious mind never sleeps. So it works all night long on what you are programming it with. So I go to bed if I have a speech or whatever the next day and I want to visualize myself performing the speech or the, the presentation very well kind of thing. You can also have a hypnotherapist um, create a hypnotic programming recording for you and listen to that the night before. And it's not that you can only do it the night before, but I really like doing it the night before because I feel like that just gets into the subconscious even more. Um, I like to also create a calming hand anchor that when I reach the podium, I do that with my hands. That calms me down and keeps me from doing my hand talk too much, you know. Not that you can't use your hands, but you get what I'm saying. Um, you also want to uh, anchor in with a possibly a different anchor and phrase all of the positive things that are going on in your life, whether it be the speeches or anything else, so you can bring those positive feelings back up. And then another good idea is to consider gradual exposure to public speaking if you have a big presentation that you know is coming up. Because obviously if you wait until the night before to um, write the presentation, to think about it, you're not going to sleep well, you're not going to be mental rehearsing well. So you don't want to be memorizing anyway. So you, you, know, you might want to do gradual exposure so you can um, go to groups such as Toastmasters, um, they're online even anymore. Um, you can go to workshops, you can go to seminars, you can just uh, practice speaking a little bit here and there, smaller presentations in, in a less intimidating setting, if that makes sense. So important tips for delivery is also something to talk about. So you might consider, just like a singer warms up or a dancer warms up, you might consider some gentle vocal exercises before you go on, like humming or doing tongue twisters to get your voice ready and to help with articulation and pronunciation as well. You can also pay attention to your pace and rhythm using variations of speed and well-placed pauses. 
yet for the most part understand that when we are nervous we tend to go a lot faster and kind of not breathe so in the beginning definitely slow yourself down pause for your own breathing and stuff and then do your well-placed pauses and everything else and pacing and rhythming as you go through um, focus on your articulation and pronunciation to captivate and persuade your audience as well because that's important and you want to maintain a good posture throughout your speaking or your presentation because this does convey confidence and authority. And it'll also aid in your breath moving through all parts of your lungs easily and in projecting your voice enough too. Uh, another thing to think about is making eye contact is very important. It creates that sense of intimacy and touches your audience and it creates engagement as well. Now, if this feels really daunting to you to be thinking about your presentation and looking at people in the eyes, then you can kind of focus in the general area of the eyes or in their forehead area, if that helps you out. Uh, you do also want to start with a strong opening or a hook, and you want to make sure that it has a visual aspect to it and it's kind of unexpected so it gets everyone's attention as well. Remember what we hear first and last tends to really stick with us. So you don't want to waste a lot of time on a long thank you to the person who introduced you if that happened and or explaining your background and your credentials. Um, people are going to kind of go to sleep and this, this is kind of known as wind ups in the speaking world. So it's it's just well, it feels like it might be a nice thing to do to say a long thank you and to explain why you're qualified to give your presentation or whatever. It kind of puts people to sleep and it's not the thing to do. Do the hook first, basically. Uh, you do want to organize your content logically, of course, without memorizing, as I said before, because if you rely on memorization, number one, it kind of makes you kind of sound like a robot in many cases. And number two, if something unexpected happens, it could cause you to forget your memorization or if somebody, if there's some kind of distraction in the audience, it can throw everything off if you memorize only. Um, you do want to sprinkle in stories, anecdotes, uh, metaphors, whatever that can be. They can be personal, they can be case studies, like I said, metaphor, analogies, uh, vivid imagery or relatable stories. Um, this is going to help keep the audience focused as well. Um, when you do tell stories, as much as possible, speak in the first person saying, I, I, because this helps the, to portray authenticity, and it's not like you're speaking at your audience, you're speaking with them, so it's important to, whenever possible, of course, there are times when you do have to say you or they. Um, and if you're giving a business presentation, it is best, if at all possible, understanding that sometimes it's not, but if at all possible, to limit yourself to three major talking points because this is about all the brain can kind of process at one time is about three points. So keep that in mind. And you do want to perhaps practice emphasizing your key points with intonation, with pauses, with gestures, and facial expressions in front of a mirror beforehand so you know what you're looking, sounding like, etc. You can also consider taking an NLP course to better understand persuasive language patterns and gestures because they can do a lot for you. And um, you do want to also have a dynamic ending and of course be gracious. Uh, this could mean ending with a story that's a metaphor illustrating your key points or it could be something else entirely. So many different options because everybody speaks on different things. But just wanted to kind of share this information. I hope it's useful to you if you're here in the U.S. Not only have a happy Mindful Monday, but have a happy Labor Day as well. And we will see you really soon. Take care.